Okay, time for another film review. Today I'm going to be talking about the brand new film from M. Night Shyamalan? Shyamalan? M. Night. You know the guy. You know what I'm talking about. The guy who does all the twist endings. And before you even get worried, don't worry, there will be no spoilers in this review. I'm talking, of course, about Split, uh, which I'd only heard about a couple of weeks ago. Saw the trailers. It looked incredible. So I'm glad we went to see it uh, last weekend. And yeah, this was a really cool film. Uh, stars James McAvoy, who is one of my favorite, well he's my favorite current working actor. My favorite actor of all time is Michael Keaton, but you know, he does films here and there, but my favorite current actor is definitely James McAvoy, has been for many years. Loved him since um, Shameless, um, like 10 years ago or even longer, uh, back in the days when he was doing, you know, UK TV. And then when he started getting film roles, I was like, oh great, you know, I was, was really happy that he was getting kind of bigger roles and it's only seemed to grow over the past few years. He did the X-Men First Class trilogy, um, and some other really good films that a lot of people haven't seen. So if you have seen Split, just before we get onto the film itself, and you really liked James McAvoy's performance in it, I highly recommend you go check out Filth, where he gives a similarly kind of unhinged, crazy performance in a very uh, graphic film, but it, it is really worth it um, if you like this kind of stuff. And also, The Disappearance of Eleanor Rigby, which is a concept film that has two parts, uh, him and her where you see a relationship between James McAvoy and Jessica Chastain uh, uh, from both of their perspectives. So there's two movies. It's the same story, but you see the different perspective. It's incredible. No one really talks about it. I did a whole review about it. I'll, I'll link that at the end of this video, actually, so you can easily find it. But yeah, uh, he's a great actor. I, I, I'm really glad to see that people are really recognizing now that how great he is. And in this film, he really gives a tour de force performance, just really unhinged, but kind of focused and sinister and vulnerable. And and just, it's incredible. This is one of those kind of Oscar winning performances, but obviously, you know, uh, it'll be forgotten by next year because the Oscars are all about what came out in January, uh, December and November. But um, uh, yeah, I thought he was stunning in this film and he plays a man who has DID and uh, this kind of multiple personality disorder. Before, again, before I even get into the, the film again, I've seen there's been a lot of controversy about the film, people saying that this film is uh, shouldn't be seen because it makes people with uh, mental uh, disorders uh, out to be crazy and all I want to say to those people is it's a film uh, and if you watch it from start to finish you'll see that it, it really isn't trying to uh, uh, make a serious statement on people who have men mental disorders uh, just watch the film uh, I just think that those kind of claims are just are just really looking to be offended by something when the, the, the there shouldn't be enough hours in the day to be getting offended by something like this, in my opinion. Um, but this is a thriller film, uh, and is a really tensely wrought thriller film, where you have these girls at the beginning who get um, abducted by James McAvoy's character, uh, and they're obviously terrified, they get put in this room, they don't know what's going on, and he comes and, and sees them every now and again, and every time he comes to see them, uh, well not every time, but you know, the first few times, uh, he appears to be different, he's talking in a different voice, he has a different demeanor to him. And if you've seen the trailers, you know what I'm talking about, if you've seen the film, you know what I'm talking about, but he has, I think, 23 different personalities. Uh, and throughout the film, we cut between the girls who are, you know, who've been kidnapped and are, are being held hostage almost. Uh, well, not even hostage, they're, they're just being held captive um, by this guy. But we cut to this, this uh, older woman who is working with James McAvoy's character um, with his, his disorder. And she's kind of trying to talk him through things and stuff like that. She knows a lot about him. He frequently emails her that he needs to see her and he turns up and then, you know, she kind of tells that it was a different personality who emailed her and he doesn't quite know why he's there. Uh, and then she starts to, to think that maybe he's he's pretending to be someone else uh, when he's a different personality. It gets quite confusing, but I think they did an excellent job of, of balancing it all out. They didn't show all 23 personalities. In fact, I saw an interview with James McAvoy where he said that he didn't come up with 23 uh, ideas of all these characters. He only focused on the, I think, nine that you see in the film in any kind of prominent way uh, but they really balanced it and, and even after you know an hour of the film I, I kind of knew all the personalities by name uh, and what they were like and, and where the differences were and it's such an interesting film to watch unfold and the tension I thought was unbelievable I mean he gives such a powerful performance where uh, I, I felt the fear that those girls must have had uh, and the the unease that, that they must have had in that situation I, I thought the girls uh, in the in the film were, were great as well particularly the main uh, actress who is kind of the the main character of that and we get flashbacks to her kind of childhood and that plays into the ending very very well so great 
acting in this, even the older woman who works with um, uh, his his character um, and she knows about his disorder and his multiple personalities, she was a phenomenal actress as well. So this is just a great film with uh, with, with very strong performances and a, and a very good um, story that just keeps you guessing where it's going to go and then by the end it really does kind of take it to another level. Now that is where I'm going to end kind of the spoiler free section. I am going to do a little bit of spoiler talk at the end um, and I'll give you fair warning but overall I thought this film was fantastic. Like again I'd only heard about it a couple of weeks ago. It looked great and it was great. It delivered. It was a fantastic thriller um, that again kept you guessing um, but really to me, I mean, I, I, hate to, I hate to say it, but it literally is just sitting there and just being amazed by James McAvoy's performance. It is absolutely stunning, I think. I just, it's, it's one of my favorite performances in years. Um, he just brings so many different elements to it. And at no point do you feel like he's overdoing it, even though the things that he's doing are very over the top. And there was actually a lot of, um, well, not a lot of, but I'd say a fair amount of these humorous moments that came out of his multiple personalities. And a lot of people in the cinema were laughing. And I can get that. I, I, can, I can get, you know, people finding the humor in it. But I didn't laugh once. At no point did I feel amused by any of it. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not saying that that means that the, the jokes fell flat. I'm just saying that, I was so kind of overwhelmed by his performance. There's a scene where he does a dance, basically, is one of them, and he's doing this kind of crazy dance, and people are pissing themselves, laughing in the cinema, and I just found it like, you know, I, I don't know what it is. It almost goes back to the, the Darth Vader scene in Rogue One, where everyone's like, oh, yes, this is awesome, and I'm just there sitting there just terrified. Like, I, I don't seem to react to the same things as other people sometimes, but to me, I was just so, like, in horror of, of just everything about his performance. Um, uh, and by the, by the time you get to the end, it was very uh, uh, interesting. I, I think the ending, to me, did kind of sour it a little bit. I wasn't too big a fan of the ending. Uh, that's the only thing I take away from it. Um, but it isn't even that much of a drop-off. Uh, fantastic film. Definitely go and see it if you haven't already. Now I'm going to talk about a little bit of spoilers. Uh, so if you haven't seen the film, turn off now. The ending of the film... Obviously, it, it, throughout the film, it builds up this idea that he, he's kind of scared of the beast, the 24th personality, this, this monster, you know. Uh, and obviously, you know, throughout the film, I'm thinking, well, it's this, this construct inside his own mind. And then the, the woman who's working with him, she, she says the same thing. It, it's not real. You, you, you're making it up in your own head. Um, but the beast is real. He, he, he morphs into, well, he doesn't morph into, but like you see the veins bulging out on him and he becomes this kind of superhuman thing. He gets shot with a shotgun, doesn't die. He's climbing up on the walls like Gollum. It just, um, it took it a bit far for me. Um, but then of course, by the end of the film, uh, you get that reveal with Bruce Willis at the end in that last shot where he's his character from Unbreakable. I've never seen Unbreakable, so it meant nothing to me. So what must have been such a great moment for people who are fans of Unbreakable, to me, I was like, huh, Bruce Willis. I guess I must be from that other M. Night film, the Unbreakable or whatever. But I, again, so I had to look into Unbreakable and read about that the people who had powers in that film. I don't even know that much. So I guess what it means is that James McAvoy's character, he, he actually had this superpower strength. I don't know. I, I still don't know. Apparently they're, they're thinking about doing a sequel. Um, but that's the only thing I had to take away from it. Because for me, it would have been so much more uh, scary if it was all just, you know, it, it all could have happened. And that there wasn't this superhero. I mean, it, it almost, I could almost, I was trying to kind of justify it, Like, well, I guess he could climb up onto the walls because there's like footholds and stuff. And, you know, maybe his adrenaline's going so much and he got shot with a shotgun and he's going to die later. But you see him alive at the end and he's he seems fine. So... You know, and I was even thinking maybe it was blanks in the shotgun or something. I don't know because he tells the girl about the shotgun. Uh, I was trying to make it, you know, as realistic as possible in my head. But by the end of the film, it kind of reveals that it, it, he really did have this beast within him, and that it was something more than human. So a little bit disappointing because I found it so sinister to believe that it could have been within the realms of possibility, if that makes sense. But uh, yeah, fantastic film. I absolutely loved it. I, I couldn't see it not being in like my top 20 of the year by the time we get to that, like in a year's time, because I just thought it was so good and such a great cinema experience, apart from the fact that there was a guy on my right who just was on his phone for like half the fucking movie. Like, just, just go home. If you're going to sit there on your phone, go home and sit on your phone. Why do you have to pay money to sit in a dark room and disturb other people? 
Uh, I, I just don't understand it. I guess it's teenagers, you know, that they just get given money to go out by their parents. They don't give a shit and they'll just sit there and just hang out on their phone and it's just, it drives me nuts. At one point I literally was like that because it was just distracting me, this light just flickering every like 10 minutes while I'm trying to watch this gripping, you know, uh, captivating film. Anyway, a little rant over. Uh, thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts on Split down below if you've seen it and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, all right by me. <laughs> Apart from the fact he throws cans of Carlin into a tree. <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, he's really cool. <laughs> but he's not quite as cool as you. Cause...